G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. You know, when I was a boy, I thought this was the sound the sun made. I used to lay on my back on the ground and imagine I was like a gorilla living in a forest that was full of my favourite food, a food forest. Now I'm 54 and that dream has never left me. When lockdown started in March 2020, and I saw videos online of people reacting to simple things like toilet paper. At that time, I put all my energy into creating that paradise dream I had as a child. In this episode of The Weedy Garden, I'm going to show you how I planned, planted and protect my food forest. It all started with my first tree, the mango. As this one is one of my all-time favourites for taste, I had to plant this one first. Mm. So I dug a big hole and I planted it on top of a dead wallaby that I found on the road. A roadkill they call them here in Australia. It was a nice resting place for that wallaby instead of laying there by the road. Then I heard about another technique called the Ellen White method. That also involved digging a big hole and I filled it up with a mixture of compost and forest mulch and topsoil and it made an air pocket with stones and, and all sorts of stuff. I did that with a few trees but to be honest I got a bit tired of the digging. Then I met Jeff Lawton. G'day mate, it's a weedy garden guy, how are you? the permaculture guru who lived just down the road from me and he was the first person I met that actually had one of these forests that I kept dreaming about. A place where I could run around and eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, like a gorilla. While we ran around through his food forest during a thunderstorm, he explained that you are what you eat. You definitely are what you eat. And if you don't know what you eat, you don't know who you are quite often. You've lost that connection. We identify ourselves by the produce that sustains us and we should never lose sight of that. <laughs> that night it rained and rained and rained and I couldn't get any sleep at all. Not because it was raining, but because I couldn't stop thinking about creating a food forest on the hill besides the weedy garden. So I waited a couple of days until Jeff had finished with his course and drove back out there. And I said, Jeff, would you like to come out to my garden and help me design my food forest? You know what he said? He said, Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Excellent. Hey, high five. <laughs> See where it goes. <laughs> okay. So he came out and he explained to me what a swale is. So I could catch the water and, and help soak it up under the roots of the forest I was just about to plant. So I started digging again, and soon realised that there was a lot more digging than even the Ellen White method. So I dug and I dug and I dug, and until I broke my toe on a big rock. And then I asked my mates for help. And in one day, we got all the swales dug. So after all this was done, I had to figure out what sort of trees I wanted and where they should go. It's important to note that I only chose the food that I like to eat, 
mostly. But there's also quite a few medicine plants in here as well. It's like having a health food store in my backyard. It wants to be a forest. It's trying its hardest all by itself, actively moving the land towards a balanced, sustainable and resilient ecosystem. When I think about how I want my forest to be, I need to think about what I plant, where I plant it, and when. These are the important things. To help me explain where I want to plant my trees and why, I'm going to do a little shadow puppet theatre here in the weedy garden. So here we have north, south, east, and west. Now, if I plant a tree that's going to be a big one, like a mango or an avocado or a pecan, watch what happens during the winter months when the tree has grown big, if I plant it here in the middle of the garden. The sun sits low in the sky, even at noon. So all this part of the garden will be in shadow all day long. So I want to plant all my big trees down here so the rest of my garden with the lower trees and the berries and the vegetables, they all get plenty of direct sun during the winter. So that's what I did. The first thing that was planted was actually the cover crop. Uh, and I used vetch. It's a nitrogen fixing undergrowth that will eventually become mulch. And it helps keep the ground moist and it stops most of the weeds from coming up It only took me one day to plant all the 70 trees. Most of them will give fruit, some will give nuts, and some will just be there to support the bigger ones until they get established. And their roots, they will pave the way down through the soil for the big fruit trees that will use those channels in the soil after the support species have died. Most support trees will only be there for the first few years of the forest's life. They grow fast. They create a canopy for the sun-sensitive species. And when you chop and drop, their limbs and their leaves, they feed the microbes and fungi to create a living abundance of microorganisms in the soil which feed your trees. Now it's starting to rain, but uh, when it rains, it's a good time to plant trees while it's raining. See, it's raining here today, which is nice because it's um, perfect, perfect for planting trees. And because this swale is so nice and soft, I just have to just poke my thumb and my hand in a bit, like that. Spreading these little roots out a little bit. of stuff on them. It's a peanut butter tree this one. I wonder if you can use the leaves to catch the mouse. But sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get the plant out and you're sort of squeezing it and pulling it but I found the best way to do it is just on your knee or on a table. Just give it a hit like hold it here and just give it a hit like that. Poor little thing. Look at the roots. It's all root bound so that one needs to be just gently pulled out a little bit. They're pretty, they're pretty loose. This is gonna be so happy to get in the ground. Yeah. I grew this one from a seed in the ground. Little Evo. So. And I'll give it a bit of that yummy, yummy soil on top. A couple of handfuls. A mixture of compost, composted cow manure and blood and bone. Very happy there. A little bit of salt water um, mixed with real tank water.
not easy by itself. Actually, it's very heavy. So I'm just gonna move that up a bit. I'm gonna get squashed. See these roots? I just got to pull these roots out a bit so they're not all just tangled up together. Just open them out so they don't go around in, in circles. Another thing that I did which I thought was pretty cool was I filled up the swales with sawdust from the local sawmill. I did this for two reasons. One, it feels really good under my bare feet. Gorillas don't wear shoes in the forest. I don't either. The other reason I'm filling up the swales with sawdust is that it will retain much more moisture. Over time, it'll become food for the trees. In a few years, or maybe even less, it will be full of fungi, a massive underground global network. If you imagine that the soil is like a huge supermarket or a health food store, and the tree's roots are the customers, they're looking for food. Well, the fungi, it acts like the shop assistant for the trees. It can tell the plant where the good stuff is and even help bring it to the roots through all the tiny hairs that connect everything under here. At this stage, I thought I was doing great. One food forest, ready to go. All I have to do now is wait. The wind came, the sun was hot. The kangaroos came and the bush turkey came. I thought I was going to lose the lot. See, these little trees would normally germinate under the mother canopy. That in itself is a vital protector of the seed as it germinates and reaches up into the world. No strong winds, no direct sunlight. I made a mistake by putting everything in the open like this. But I didn't panic, no, I stayed calm and I tried to imagine how I would make something that resembled a canopy. I had to be this tree's mother for a while until it was strong enough to look after itself. So I did. So this is what it looks like today and I'm starting to feel like a gorilla from my childhood dreams. Hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, I hope it inspires you to make a food forest of your own, a place you can connect to, a place you can protect too, so you will one day be able to walk around and eat whatever you want, whenever you want, just like a gorilla. So, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something.
beautiful healthy happy trees this time have a nice day and i'll catch you later i'll leave you with all these empty pots <laughs>